Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a, a look at this uh, RF demo kit board uh, supposed to be for the Nano uh, VNA but I'm actually going to use it with a, a spectrum analyzer in the case of this video it's going to be the the tiny SA now if you're a spectrum analyzer or RF expert this probably isn't the video for you uh, this is definitely a beginners level video so I'm trying to say that clearly up front so that when the experts want to make lots of comments okay that's absolutely fine I welcome your comments but just be aware that I'm not an expert and this video isn't really made for experts either so maybe that's not the kind of thing you want to watch if you're already very used to uh, the controls of a spectrum analyzer so the one thing that's nice about these boards is firstly they're inexpensive and secondly uh, they allow you to get some practice in the settings of what can be very complex instruments and that practice will come in very handy when you want to start characterizing the output of some of your own circuits so without further ado let's go straight to the bench okay so one of the problems that you sometimes get with a complicated instrument like the tiny sa it may be small but it's got an awful lot of settings on it and as i said in the intro this is not a video for experts this is um probably suit you people who've got a tiny sa and are a bit baffled by it all um as am i to a certain extent so what i've got is this um, RF demo kit circuit board which I got from Banggood I, I bought it it's not a, a sponsored in any way um, I think I paid about six pounds for this um, plus a couple of pounds delivery and it's got a number of um, connections on it and you can use it with the, with the nano VNA but it's also got um, some filter circuits on it here and the one that I'm particularly going to use for this little explanation is uh, number five here which is a band stop filter um, uh, for six and a half uh, megahertz so it attenuates six and a half megahertz quite strongly now it's drawn very nicely there but let's um, let's see if we can actually see that now to the best of my knowledge this tiny SA doesn't have a tracking generator so um, generating a frequency to sweep across um, isn't that easy now a few videos back I did a, a video on this which is a, a kit it's an RF noise bridge an M0BMN noise bridge uh, nice little simple kit and it makes RF noise and a couple of people asked um, on some previous uh, videos what, what, do, what do you need one of those for why do you need noise well um, again no great expert but the useful thing for this here for me is it produces broadband RF noise so uh, we'll we'll have a look at that now so I've got the noise source attached to the tiny SA and I've got a sweep centered on six and a half megs because that's what this filter is currently the filter is out of circuit as you can probably see um, and so the tiny SA is just sweeping here um, about three megahertz and it's just sweeping across with um, uh, six and a half megahertz set in the center so let's connect up the power supply to the noise bridge and hopefully straight away you'll see we suddenly increase the noise floor probably about a division and a half something like that um, but although it does tail off at the higher frequency we've definitely got some noise there so now what I'm going to do is swap over the connections so bear with me while I do that um, so having seen what that noise is we're now going to put the output of the filter onto there or the right hand side of the filter that would work either way because it's passive uh, and I'm now going to feed the noise source into the filter and when I've finished connecting up hopefully what you're now going to see straight away is um, yeah we can see the the band a stop going on there there um, and this is quite handy because the um, broadband RF noise produced by the noise bridge um, gives you a straight line and this is allowing that bit to be attenuated and it shows up so it's no substitute for a, a proper tracking generator but in the absence of uh, that kind of thing um, uh, it allows us to actually uh, see the shape of the filter now I've, I've set 
the centre line at six and a half megahertz. So I don't feel that um, that marker there is particularly helpful to know whether you can see it, but you can hopefully see the shape of the filter. But again, if you knew to something like um, an instrument like a spectrum analyzer, it's got so many different settings on it that it's easy to get into a, a total mess. But one thing you can do here to perhaps um, appreciate the filter shape a little bit more is to in, is to change the scale per division. So currently we've got it set to the scale to, to, to uh, dBm. Got it set to 10 dBm per division. That's what that means there. So if we go on here to uh, level and we go on to scale per division. Uh, if I set up 10 dBm, nothing changes, so you can obviously it is set there. Um, so let's now go back to that scale per division and let's make it 20 dBm. So now we've got a less pronounced dip, um, which is probably not particularly helpful, but if you think about it, we've um, effectively compressed the scale. But if we open it up, it allows us to um, see the shape of the filter uh, even better. So if we now go to 5 dBm, uh, you can see now uh, quite clearly we indeed that filter is pretty good at 6.5 MHz there, it's pretty close to it, and we have got uh, uh, quite a steep uh, uh, sides to the to the filter, so it's uh, working well as a band stop filter. And if we try to make it even, if we go to two dBm, um, it's sort of off the scale now. I suppose you could tweak a few other bits to get it uh, on the display, but you uh, you get the idea. And obviously the slow update rate here is because I've got a fairly um, narrow span. So we'll go back to um, to five. DBM, there we go, and it's um, showing up the, the filter quite nicely. Now, what's the point of this video? Well, two points really. The first one is these boards aren't a lot of money, and this is quite a handy little device to let you practice with the settings because, to be quite honest, you need to practice with this instrument. It's, it's fantastic for the money. Um, but there's an awful lot of things on these menus and it's only by using them that you find your, your way about them. And I'm far from being an expert on the Tiny SA. Uh, we will put some links to Eric K. Shock's uh, uh, website on there, where, which is the definitive resource for this. Um, but hopefully um, that's been a little bit useful and I'd recommend um, getting these kind of things. So I'm going to just, uh, by the magic of filmmaking, uh, swap over, change the scan rate, and then we'll just have a look at, um, at this band pass filter, which is supposed to be at uh, 10.7 megahertz, which of course is a popular IF frequency. So um, I'll just uh, I'll just swap over to that, and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so uh, here we are now, set up on the uh, 10.7 megahertz filter. And I've changed the span here so that 10.7 um, is uh, is in the centre there, and I've also gone back to 10 dBm, which is what the unit usually defaults to. Um, so you can see the the shape there. So let's go to five. Oops, apologies. Um, press the wrong button there. Let's go to five dBm. Let the sweep complete and that's going to start settling down a bit. But there you go, You've, you can hopefully see we've got a nice uh, bandpass filter there, um, centred on about, uh, well it is centred on 10.7 megs, so that's actually um, pretty good. Um, let's try uh, two, that should work okay. There you go, yep, see the shape of the filter quite nicely and I think the important point to note here is that you see this kind of diagram drawn in, in, in textbooks and on websites and I think it just connecting the instrument up straight away you don't always get the same shape and you perhaps think there's something wrong so I think the thing to bear in mind is there are so many settings on here which um, you can change and sometimes you need to do that to be able to, to produce uh, a reasonable looking answer so there we have um, a 10.7 megahertz filter 
um, on the Tiny SA. Hopefully that's been useful and shown you how to use uh, a noise bridge uh, with a, a simple spectrum analyzer such as this. Okay, well that's it for a first look at the RF demo kit board. Hopefully it's uh, made some sense. And if you haven't got one of these, definitely worth getting there. As I say, they're inexpensive. I'll make sure there's a link in the description. I bought this, it's not in any way sponsored. And uh, you can use it to, to practice with um, your Tiny SA or with any spectrum analyzer for that matter, or, well, or even the Nano VNA, which what all the Smith charts are all about. So, hope it's been useful. Thanks very much for watching. Please click like, and if you've not subscribed, please consider doing that. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.